Hi guys, my name is Jimmy Allison. I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. And in this video, I'm gonna go over a technique for sampling utilizing the Ableton Push. Now for this example, I grabbed this uh, saxophone improvisation. I got it off this website, which is really cool. You guys should check it out. It's Free Music Archive. Basically, a lot of people put stuff up there for Creative Commons so you can uh, freely use it to sample. Just You just have to go check their licensing more info right here, and it'll tell you how the work can be used. Now for this example, I'm gonna chop it up. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and warp it or anything. I'm just gonna get over on the push, and I'm gonna use the convert button. And what's really cool about the convert is I could, have re I could be jamming with this dude and recorded him directly into Ableton Live, and then on the fly, hit the convert button, convert it to simpler, and now I have the performance automatically loaded in the simpler for me. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit and adjust the start, start point. It's cool, it repitches, but what I wanna do is I wanna go into slicing. And what slicing will do is it'll just chop it up and fill up the 64 pads. Of course, there's more audio than pads, so it only cut up the beginning, but that's okay because we don't need to use a lot of it. So the first thing I want to do is turn down the sensitivity all the way down. And then I can use the start to find a spot that I want to sample from. It's almost like the, the, turn, the turntable needle on a record. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and bring down the end a little bit. And let me find a good spot. We'll just get this second phrase right here. Let me zoom in just a little bit there. Yeah, that'll work. And we'll get that phrase and that phrase. So let's bring the end down because I don't need all of this. We can zoom out a little bit so it moves faster. So we'll just get that part and then the next part. That worked. And now let me go ahead and turn up the sensitivity. And since it's set to slice on transient, that will probably do what I mostly want it to do. So I'm just gonna turn it up just a little bit more. We'll get like just a, a four by four rack of slices. And let's see how that sounds. That first slice is not really usable, so we'll have to edit that. Let's bring down the sensitivity just a little bit. We want to try that phrase. Okay, all right, so what I can do about that first slice, I can just move the start just a little bit. And it'll, and it'll correct itself. And now another thing I need to do is let me go ahead and go into Simpler and I'm gonna go to Envelopes and I'm gonna adjust the fade in and fade out so we don't have those little clicky noises between samples. That'll work, and then can also adjust the volume here. And you can also get into other elements of the sample. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna figure out what key this is in. So we can go over to our audio effects, and I'm gonna grab a spectrum, and I'm gonna grab a tuner. Tuner can be a lot quicker. It tells me I'm a little off F sharp, but the spectrum will be a lot more accurate, and sometimes the tuner won't work like, for samples that have multiple tones. The spectrum, I can just look at the lowest tone, scroll my mouse over the point, 
And you'll see it's resolving mm -hmm. to F sharp. If you look over on the far bottom left corner of spectrum, it'll tell you the frequency, the note, and the volume of where my mouse is located on the spectrum graph. So with that in mind, I think I'm gonna go ahead and transpose it up to G from F sharp. So all I need to do is click simpler on my push, and then let's click it one more time to get into the uh, device so that I can edit it. And then under global, you'll find your transpose. So I'm just gonna raise it a semitone. So it's closer to G, cause I actually wanna play my bass on it. And I kinda like playing in G a little bit better than F sharp most of the time. So now let's go ahead and come up with an idea. I already have this drum break loaded in here. Let's just see if I can come up. So I'm gonna turn on the metronome. There we go. Go ahead and quantize. So, uh, kind of shifted it a lot. Let's see how well that works. Now, I don't like that, so let me undo. My performance was pretty bad. Um, so let's just do it again. Sometimes I just like to do things again. There we go, this one looks a little better. I kind of don't want to hard quantize it, so I'm going to undo. I'm going to hold down the quantize button, which will give me the ability to uh, adjust the amount. And the grid. So I'm looking at my grid on the screen. I can see that, yeah, I'm pretty much in 16th notes, but we'll just only quantize it to about 85%. Now when I let go, I hit quantize again. It'll get it close, but not perfect. Cool. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just drop a bass line in that. All right, let's try this bass line out. Now, now the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and fix the clip. So I'm gonna go to clip view on the push, and then I'm gonna adjust the end position, actually the loop length, make it a two bar loop, and let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and actually hit the quantize button on this one too. And let's see how that sounds with a hard quantize. A little rough, let me undo that. Let me do the same thing. I'm gonna hold down quantize. And I'm thinking about my grid a little bit. It's probably also playing like a lot of 16th notes, but Let's try and do it a little less. It gets a little rough on that second measure there. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just make it a one bar loop. And then that's not very exciting. Now I could of course just replay it until I get it right. But what fun would that be? Because what I can do now is hit convert. And I'm gonna go ahead and convert my baseline to a simpler. And then I'm gonna switch it to slice mode. And let's see how it sounds. All right, so let me go ahead and turn it up a little bit. So I'm gonna click mix to get into my track volume. Let's turn that up. Cool, now let's go back to the device view. And let me adjust my sensitivity just a little bit. I'm gonna take it down a notch. We have some blank space that we might wanna get rid of, like this slot right there. Let's bring it down a little bit more. Nah, that's probably a little too much. Let's bring it up just a little bit, there we go. And then the same thing, I'm gonna go into my device, 
go to envelopes, adjust my fade in and fade out. And get, and get it so it doesn't sound all clicky. And then I can also increase the volume here. Awesome. So let's go back to main and cool. Now I have a bunch of dead slots in here like this one. This one I might not like. So what actually might be more useful is let's say I convert again and go ahead and take it to a drum rack. And in the drum rack, I can actually get rid of these unused ones. Yeah, let's get rid of this too. And then I'm gonna use like duplicate to move things around. So I'm just gonna hold duplicate, move you over, delete the original. I'll just leave those two there for now. Cool. Now let's see what I can come up with. Kind of busy. Let's actually delete that and make it a little more simple. Cool. That'll work. Let me hit quantize and see how that comes out. Little things that I can go ahead and fix up, probably just use the mouse for that. But that pretty much concludes all I wanted to talk about today. And it's mainly on how to use the push just to take some live audio, load it into simpler, use slice mode, edit it a little bit, replay it. And then like in the case with the bass, I was like, okay, let me go ahead and take it to a drum rack. So there's a lot of options. And realistically, you could totally be doing this live on stage. So go ahead and have fun, explore and experiment and uh, enjoy your push.